What's up guys, this is Eric from B-Side. Today we have here a Lexus RX with factory navigation. This is a 2016-2019 model, all fully loaded with the 360 panoramic camera. And we're gonna be installing another CarPlay Android Auto Retrofit to this vehicle. It's a plug and play install. And we decided we wanna make a new video because our last video that we made almost a year ago, it's you still using the old harness. And we went and we switched to a new harness at the end of last year. And we've been getting a lot of inquiries on the difference between the new harness and the old one. Some people just get a little confused. So we just decided to make a new video showing you how to connect the new harness, which is easier. We did eliminate one of the connectors behind the screen so that all you have to do is route the GVI cables behind the screen and the rest of the connectors just connect behind the radio. Another cool function about our CarPlay Android Auto Retrofit kit that we don't mention in our previous video is it retains the use of the factory proximity sensor and also the, the interrupt for the 360 camera. So once you approach an object or once you're slowing down, the 360 camera system will take over and it'll switch over to the camera. Once you're done viewing the camera, it'll switch back to the CarPlay screen, just like factory. And it doesn't matter if you're in the factory screen or the CarPlay screen, it'll always work the same. All right, so let's not waste any more time. Let's get inside the vehicle and let's go ahead and install the kit. All right, guys, so now that we're in the vehicle, let's go ahead and start removing the interior panels. The first part we're gonna remove is this piece here. So we're gonna raise the armrest and just go ahead and pull this towards this way, okay? Just being held by clips and just slowly work your way towards the front and it'll come out just like so. And then let's go ahead and push down on the shift boot and turn this counterclockwise to remove the shift knob. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and remove this trim here. Just place your finger here, push the clip out like so, and just go ahead and just work your way to the top. Okay, next we're gonna remove this. Place your finger back here, just pull it towards you. Just move the clips. All right, just go ahead and keep pulling it back. There it is. And you're gonna have to push the release tab behind the the start button and then push it out. So here's the connector that's holding the start button. You're gonna push on the release tab and just pull it out, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and push the release tabs like this and go ahead and, and keep this connected here. So when we do our testing later, it'll be easier to turn on and off the infotainment screen. All right, and let's go ahead and remove this piece as well. Let's go ahead and just pry it out. All right, and then let's go ahead and remove this piece here. So use a panel removal tool, you're gonna pry it out. Okay, just pry it like so. Grab it with your finger and then you just pull it up. All right, just be careful you don't scratch your screen when you're removing this piece. All right, now we're gonna remove the back. The rear one's gonna require a panel removal tool that's a little bit bigger, like so. Just go in here and just pry it up, like so. And next, we are going to use our 10 millimeter socket. And we're gonna remove one, two, three. Okay, three up here. And then we're gonna remove two up for the radio. All right. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and remove this. Disconnect the connectors. This one has a 360 camera, so it has this additional white connector. If you don't have a 360 camera system, you will not have this. Move these, and there's one connector down here. I'm gonna always push down a release tab and pull out on the connector, don't pull on the wires. And then we are going to remove the clip that's holding those cables using a flathead screwdriver. Once you remove these, go ahead and just put the screen in a safe location. Okay, especially with the screen, be very careful when you're handling it because there's some sharp edges on the bracket. So just be very, very careful. All right, so we got those removed. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the 10 millimeter bolts. We have one on each side right here. You're gonna have to use an extension for this. Instead of using our power tool, we're gonna use a wrench because it's easy to drop these 10 millimeter bolts. And I also recommend you to use this magnetic tip to grab the 10 millimeter bolt. If you don't have a magnetic tip, what you can do is you can get some masking tape, put it inside this, the socket hole, which will give you a tighter fit. 
so that when you're removing the 10 millimeter bolt, instead of moving around in here, which will increase the chance of you dropping, it will stay inside the hole and then you could drop it or you could remove it straight without dropping it to the side. All right, so we're gonna start off on the passenger side. Okay, so you're gonna have to get on your back like this and then you're gonna look up and you'll see that 10 millimeter bolt. It's gonna be looking right at you. This is the angle. Now you gotta turn this counterclockwise to loosen the bolt, okay? And once it's loosened like this, I like to just hold on to this socket and extension bar and just hand loosen it just so I could control the movement a bit better, which will reduce the risk of me dropping the bolt. Here it is. All right, let me show you a close up. Now let's go to the driver's side. Okay, so the next one is right here. Okay, and once again, just gonna loosen this using a wrench and then unscrew this bolt very slowly and be very careful when removing the bolt, like so. All right, next step, we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove this glove box. So you're just gonna go and just press this. And after you press this, there's a little clip here. Put your finger behind it and just pull it out. Okay, like so. I'm gonna squeeze the glove box up here. And then we're going to drop it all the way down. And then remove it, just like so. Okay, next thing, we're also going to remove this, these two screws here that you could use either an 8mm bolt or you can use a Phillips screwdriver. We're gonna loosen those and we'll drop the under tray. Okay, once you remove that, there's gonna be some little clips here that's holding it, holding this tray in place. Let's go ahead and move it around, push down the release tab, pull out the light. All right, so that's out. And then next, let's grab a thick towel or your old sweater. I'm gonna go ahead and set it down here to protect your interior. I'm gonna pull the radio out. So carefully, just pull it towards you. Okay, and then, Push down on the release tab for your clock. Remove that, and this will expose all the connectors that we will need to connect. All right, so once we remove this under tray here, we're gonna go ahead and remove this assembly here. So let's go ahead and we're gonna use a panel removal tool to pull this out, but it's gonna use our finger. So if you can't use your finger, you could use a panel removal tool to remove this, okay? And then we're gonna remove these 10 millimeter bolts, one and two. And then there's three Phillips screws up there that we're gonna remove. Okay, and let's go ahead and remove this. All right, and then let's go ahead and remove this um, Connector here, this is for your light, and then we're going to remove this clip. Just gonna release this like so. All right, let's go ahead and put this aside. Once all this is out, let's go ahead and route our cables. The first cable we wanna route is our GVIF cable. So we're gonna go down here, and we'll go straight up. Okay, let me do one at a time. Go with the female first. Gonna go behind this crash beam and straight up. All right, got the first one, so we're gonna connect the, our female GVIF to the male GVIF that was connected to the screen. And we got the next one coming up like so. All right, these are the only, and then this will connect to back to the screen along with these factory connectors, this one and this one. So we got three connectors going back to this screen. So let's go ahead and grab our screen and make those connections. And once again, when you're handling the screen, be very careful. These brackets are sharp and it can damage your vehicle if these brackets scratches or touches any part of your car's interior. Terrific. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just keep it there. Now let's connect the connections behind the radio so we will start off with our main connector here. So our main connector here 
It's gonna consist of these CAN wires. It's already gonna be pre-configured and connected for you, so you do not have to touch this. But this one's a brand new kit that we didn't pre-configure already, so we're gonna go ahead and connect it. Basically, if you wanna double check, the red cable, that says GS, is gonna just connect to each other. While this RX and R, these two brown RX cables are gonna connect to the white and the orange set of wires. These are called the CAN wires. Okay, and let me just undo all the wire ties. You can either use a panel removal tool or some sort of flat head, like a flat edge. Just push down on this release tab and pull up. That's going to release the connector and we're gonna connect it to our harness. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this out. It's loop it over here, over the over the factory wires so there's more there's more room. Okay, it's gonna connect to our harness. And then our male side is going to connect to the car. It's radio. Okay, and make sure it snaps and clips into place. Okay, next, let's go ahead and connect our audio cable. This is for the sound of your CarPlay. Okay, this will connect to here. I'm gonna give a little bit more slack here. Okay, and when you're connecting the male side of the car to our female connector side, if you try to connect straight, sometimes it's gonna be a little bit difficult. This one went straight in. If you do have a difficult time pushing in straight, just um, angle it a little bit this way, then it should go in. And then we're going to connect the male side to the radio. Just make sure it clicks in place. All right, now we have the audio cable, we have the microphone cable, we have the power cable, and we also have this main harness connector here, and we're gonna go ahead and route it behind the radio, and we're gonna make it come out of here, okay, behind that bracket. Okay, you do not have to Route all these cables at once, like how we did. Recommend you actually doing it one at a time. It'll be easier if you do one at a time. And if there's any of these cables kind of get stuck or hung, instead of just forcefully pulling it, see where it's caught, assess it, and then take care of it instead of forcing things. Let's be very, very patient as Electronics can sometimes be very fragile. You do not want to end up damaging any of the cables. So once that is done, we are going to now route this cable here. This is our USB. We're gonna go behind here. So we're gonna take the female side, go behind this bracket, go loop around and go towards this start button hole. Okay, so we'll go all the way around. We're gonna leave some slack here because we wanna loop this and then go under, go towards the um, cubby under the under the radio. All right, so gonna leave some slack. Just let it hang there for now. Okay. And we also have the antenna. This antenna can be connected anywhere. Just make sure it's away from the radio and also away from our interface box as it can catch interference from them. So for this vehicle, we're just gonna go ahead and just tuck it down there. Just remove the double side tape, stick it, and just tuck it under here so that it's against this panel here on this side. Okay, just keep it simple. All right, so the next step is to connect our interfaces, inter our two boxes. All right, so this is the dip switch box. Um, the dip switch is already gonna be pre-configured for you. If you accidentally end up knocking it or changing it, then you wanna just double check, just flip it over. There's gonna, there's gonna be a tag here that's gonna tell you what the dip switch configuration should be. So you could just double check that and then set it accordingly. So let's go ahead and connect our dip switch box. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure all these cables are routed under this bracket here. Okay, we're gonna end up pushing it in later. But we'll leave it at that. And um, let's go ahead and connect these GVIF cables. So the one that's labeled GVIF out, is going to be connected to the inside. 
and the one that's labeled GBIFN is going to connect to the outside edge. All right, and then we got this main harness here. It's going to connect, gonna connect like this. And what is left is the HDMI connection that's going to connect the two boxes. We'll connect. We'll connect like this, and then this side will connect to the new box here. Okay, so before we connect this to the new box, let's connect the other connection. So we got the two 3.5 millimeter jacks here. One is microphone in, it's going to connect to mic in. And the other one is NV17 audio, it's gonna connect to the outer edge here, it's going to be labeled line out. Do not connect to external speaker, that's a mono, and it's gonna be distorted sound, okay? So make sure line out and mic in. And we got the USB extension. I'm gonna go ahead and connect it here, USB wired. And we also have the RF antenna. It's a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna. We're gonna go ahead and connect it here. And then we have the power. Okay, we have this power cable. We're gonna connect here to main power 12 volt. And then lastly, let's connect the HDMI cable which connects the two boxes together. All right, so we got all this connected. Let's go ahead and push the radio in. And when you're pushing the radio in, don't forget to connect the clock back on, okay? All right. Okay, and then if you disconnected the negative terminal of the car's battery, reconnect it. And then let's go for a test. So it's gonna go ahead and turn on the vehicle. Upon first car boot up, the screen may go through a startup booting process. So make sure you don't turn off your car during that. Just, just give it about a minute or two. Let's see the screen. Let the system load. Just for testing, we are going to connect it wired for now. So once we do this, go ahead and press the media, make sure an auxiliary. And once you go to auxiliary, go ahead and just double check your EQ, make sure it's centered and all your sound setting is correct. And then after that, you're going to press and hold the map button. And map button is gonna give you CarPlay. Um, the screen looks stretched here. That's because we didn't configure this yet, but your, your kit's gonna come pre-configured, which you don't have to, but if you wanna Double check, if you go to your settings uh, menu, you'll see this resolution, it should be six. All right, and then we need to just reboot this device. All right, here it is. It's the resolution that we are familiar with. Let's go ahead and just test the function. So go ahead and play. There's the music, that's good. Press the menu. What's the weather? It has currently Terrific, series hears me. And to make sure the next track on the steering wheel control work and also the previous track works as well. And check your volume controls. You won't see the change on the screen, but you will definitely hear it. And one other setting you wanna just double check is go to your home and then go to settings. And then you'll see a microphone icon here. Go ahead and select it and this OP gain should be at zero, okay? And PGA gain should be negative three. And go ahead and save it. Um, if you wanna use our system for phone calls, you don't want to use the car's Bluetooth, make sure this is set correctly. And you can also select the auto AEC, which will configure the correct phone call delay, uh, which will prevent the echoing on your phone call. So you go ahead and select the AEC delay. I mean, you can go ahead and select the auto AEC and you'll hear a series of nine loud beeps and it will basically configure and calibrate your microphone so that it'll work without any echoing. Um, so if you wanted to use this function, before you press the auto a AEC, go back to your factory screen and make sure your volume is anywhere between 35 to 40 anywhere between 35 to 40 and then and then do it okay 
and make sure all your doors are closed and you're in a very quiet environment all right so we'll have this set up um, and then let's press the back arrow okay so everything's working as it should all right everything looks like it's working so let's go ahead and turn off the car we're going to tidy up the cables mount the boxes and reverse order everything we just did and that will complete the installation all right so let's go ahead and first organize these cables here let's see we're gonna do the best we can to to not cross the wires and you can go ahead and pull this panel piece out so just place your hand back here and just pull it towards you all right it's gonna be a little clip that falls off with it and then you're going to pull this under this clip here and around like so and then that will give you enough space for your two boxes okay and before we put it in there let's go ahead and wrap these two with some foam tape when you're using these type of foam tapes just make sure you do not block the vents on this box so if you look over here there's a vent here make sure you don't block it And also when you're mounting this, just be very, very careful with this HDMI connection points. This could be a bit fragile. If you end up damaging the circuit board because of the strain that you put on here, it's not repairable. So please be very, very careful that, um, that you do not damage this. And on top of that, please also be careful with all the other connections on the boxes. So the USB, the antenna and two 3.5 millimeter and also the HDMI on this side as well. All right, so we got the foam tape. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this on the bottom. We're gonna mount this on top. There's a lot of room back there, but still you need to be a little careful and organize the cables so that things don't get tangled up and everything is mount very neatly. And while you're doing this, you could go ahead and push all the cables behind the bracket. Okay, so we successfully pushed all this behind this bracket all the way back here. I'm gonna route it back here. This is a better way to route it. When you're move moving it behind this bracket, just be very careful that you don't damage the cable because these edges are a little sharp. All right, so the key to this install is just patience and just making sure you route the cables correctly and you organize the cables to prevent any future issues all right so we're going to go ahead and remove this tape here and we're going to mount it behind this panel piece here all right so now that it's mounted there all that's left are these cables that shows right here it's up to you you could go ahead and zip tie these if you want um, but you do, really do not need to. So we have that mounted. The next step, um, we're just gonna do one more test to make sure everything's working, and then we're going to reverse order everything we just did. All right guys, so we just finished installing this device. We wrapped everything up. We reverse order, we just did. All the factory panels are back in place. Let me just do a quick demonstration how to set your phone up for this. Before we get into connecting the phone, let me just quickly explain to you where we mounted USB extension cable. So if you look under here, there's a little cubby under the radio. So we went ahead and we routed over here. So when you're not being used, it's just kind of out of your way. You can't see it and when you wanna charge your phone or you use wired CarPlay or wired Android Auto, you could just plug it in like this right here. Okay, and just plug it into your phone. It's a really short cable, but this is just for demonstration. So first you wanna select your media. You wanna make sure you're an auxiliary and you wanna press and hold the map button like so. This is what you'll get when nothing is connected. You can't press anything and they're all grayed out. The only thing you could push is the settings. This means nothing is connected. So we're gonna go to your phone. And then first, we wanna make sure your phone is connected to a car's Bluetooth. Let's go to your Bluetooth. 
and then just make sure it's connected. And also make sure the profile name for your vehicle says Lexus RX, okay? If it says anything that has the word car in it, like car accessory or car multimedia, the calls will not correctly route to the car's Bluetooth and your call quality may suffer. So it's very important to ensure that the car profile name on your phone's Bluetooth says Lexus RX. Okay, so once you have that set up, go back to your settings, go to accessibility, go to touch, and then go to call audio routing. Default is automatic, changes Bluetooth headset. Well, now we are ready to do our first wireless connection. Go to your general, go to CarPlay, and then just wait a moment, it will show up on the bottom, MV17WBT dash some codes, letters and numbers. Select it, go ahead and pair, and go ahead and allow. And give it about five to 10 seconds, it'll automatically connect. And once you have your phone paired to the CarPlay system wirelessly, every time you come in the car, turn on the engine, phone will connect automatically to the CarPlay device. However, you do have to press and hold the map button to switch the screen between the factory navigation screen and the CarPlay screen. And once you're in the CarPlay screen, you can use this mouse controller here to go navigate through all the applications. You push down to select the app or make your selection. You can also press the side buttons, the enter, okay? The, or the right enter here. You can also push down on the screen and drag, like so. And even when you're in the map application, you could press down on the map and then move around. And then these two arrows here will be track up and also track down. And then you can also use these track up and track down on the steering wheel controls. Okay. And then these volume up and down works. You just don't see the change on the screen, but it is changing as you could hear. And the back button just works as a back button. And then pressing and holding menu button will summon Siri or Google Assistant. What's the weather today? Should be sunny today. Daytime temperatures okay. will hover around. Some and then you can also use the call button to make a phone call to, or to pick up a phone call to hang up a phone call. So we're gonna do a little quick test. I'll go ahead and call myself from my other, other phone here. Okay, there it is. I'll we'll pick it up here. There it is, and then you can hang up. Okay, and then let me go ahead and in order to disconnect your phone from the wireless device, you're gonna have to go to Bluetooth, turn off your Bluetooth, and also turn off your Wi-Fi. And then if you wanna connect to your Android device, it's a bit more simpler on the Android device, just gonna go to your settings, and then go to your connections, go to Bluetooth, and we are going to connect when it shows up on the screen. There it is, I'm going to pair. Also one thing to note, when you're pairing or trying to connect your phone wirelessly, make sure your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are both turned on, okay? Okay, this is how Android Auto looks. You could go ahead and drag around, check the map. You could select here for your applications here. Push down and scroll around. Um, your track up and down also works as well. So we got up track and down track working. The back button works as a back button. Menu button is uh, for Google Assistant. What's the weather? Okay. And then map to go back to your factory screen and then back to CarPlay Android Auto screen. And then your Surround view also works. There's your surround view, press it again, and then it'll take you back to your either CarPlay or Android Auto. And also your backup camera as well. Okay, and one more thing I wanna go over is if you are using an Android Auto and you have some phone call quality issue, what you can do is go to, go exit here. Okay, I'm gonna exit out of Android Auto. Go to settings. And let me just go ahead and disconnect Android Auto from my phone. On this setting screen, you'll find this microphone icon to the bottom right corner. Go ahead and change the OP gain to zero, and we're gonna change the PGA gain to negative three. 
and you're gonna select this auto AEC. Um, before we do this auto AC, make sure all your doors are closed. You're in a very quiet environment. And then go back to your factory screen. We're gonna set the volume at around 40. Okay, go back to the screen. We're gonna select auto AEC. You're gonna hear a series of nine peeps and it's calibrating your microphone for any delay. So we're gonna do that, it'll automatically detect. And the AEC delay will auto find the correct number. If you do get an error on here, you could turn off your car, turn it back on, try it again, um, or just um, try changing your volume level on your factory volume level and, and give it another try. So I'm gonna do it right now. Let's press this. All right, so we got 60. Okay, so depending on the vehicle, it's gonna be a little bit different, um, So, but it should be around 60. All right, guys, well, this concludes our installation demonstration of our Beatsonic S-Connect wireless CarPlay Android Auto retrofit. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or you can email us at info at beatsonicusa.com. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't yet, help us by giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys on the next video.